It's finally arrived, the PIP, a Raspberry Pi based handheld games console and development device. This is a Kickstarter project that was started in 2017. It was due to be delivered a year later, but actually arrived during 2021, three years later than originally planned. When the Kickstarter was running, I was just thinking about creating a book on games programming. I backed this project hoping to get some of those games to run on this new device, but in the end my book was published over a year before it came out. I haven't been able to get these working on the device, more about that later, but that's something I'd like to do when the operating system image catches up. To be fair to the developers of the hardware, we have been through a global pandemic which has likely had significant additional delays, although the project was running late before that. But to give them credit, they have finally shipped and the hardware looks great. This is actually a preview model, which I believe is the same hardware that everyone is getting, but this version is before the software is ready. So it's only got a basic operating system at the moment, which is a significant limiting factor, but it should be possible to upgrade that in future. This is the PIP, a Raspberry Pi based handheld computer stroke games console type device. I backed the uh, Maker edition, I'm not quite sure the, the word in, but uh, it's uh, £200 approximately I paid for this and it, it includes some Maker features as well. It was supposed to include a breadboard, they have already said that that's not going to be available they've had problems with that but the rest of it should be available and they're going to work on a breadboard for the future uh, this is actually one of the first releases they haven't yet created the software image to go on the sd cards so that's one thing that is due to follow later but i specifically volunteered to get one of the early editions before that's available. So I'll have to look at what we can do in, about that in the meantime. I haven't opened this yet, so this is my opportunity to have a look through and find out what it involves. Just noticed, actually, I haven't, this um, sticker on the side, it's got a serial number. It's number 0017, version 1. This pip belongs to Stuart Watkiss, so it includes my name on the side. Designed and manufactured in the UK by Curious Chip Limited. Uh, it is made in the UK, but I believe some parts of it, or certainly the tooling, has been made in uh, abroad as well. So, and that was probably one of the issues um, that resulted in delays. We had a bit of a um, some updates. Some updates were a long time coming, but they did eventually pop out an update. They would explain what was going wrong, what the problems are, how they're going to correct it, things like that. So this has evolved a lot since they started the project. So there's the website. This is pip.com. Pip makes coding fun and easy. Make fun games, invent apps, play retro classics or take control of objects around you. Technical specification, Raspberry Pi Compute Model 3 Plus Lite, so it's uh, a reasonable spec. 1800 milliamp hour lift LiPo battery, 4 inch 800 by 400 capacitive touchscreen, 8 programmable RGB LEDs, Raspberry Pi compatible 40 pin header, accelerometer, speaker, microphone, headphone jack, Wi-Fi, two USB-A ports, HDMI out, and five megapixel camera. So all in all, that sounds pretty good. Let's take a look inside. So there's a quick start guide. Meet Pip, the controllers, other functions. So there's some guides about before first use. Um, but let's let's go through this before we get onto the thing. So we start with Meet Pip. It 
showing you round HDMI output, shoulder buttons, the, the two connectors, controllers glide in from the side to connect to USB ports. It is possible to insert them into the wrong side, so make sure the directional controller is inserted to the left of the touchscreen and buttons to the right. And to remove them, gently lift the rear edge of the controller to release. Notice that best doing this one controller at a time unless you have a third hand to catch pip, which you probably don't. Other functions, talks about the buttons, shoulder buttons, emergency shutdown, if ever becomes responsive, hold down the down and middle buttons for three, for five seconds. So before first use, it does say to charge, Rise partially charged. You'll have to use it plugged in for the first hour or two. Remember, you can check the battery level at any time by looking at the home screen or tapping the middle button once. I'm not sure how much of this we'll be able to see because I think this is depending on their software updates. Um, check your micro SD is properly inserted into the PIP. A spring loaded connector, so push to release. Fun fact, microSD is a type of removable flash memory card. Should not be confused with Flash, the comic book character, who will mostly have memories about running superhumanly fast and will be no use to a pip. About the kickstart, powering on, coding apps. Okay, so there's the guide. So we move that, we can get on to have a look at what we've got here. So it's all Ready assemble. This looks like this is the maker pack. I'll have a look at that in a minute. I know it is. Let's, let's get inside this. Well, it actually looks really nice and feels really nice in the hand. Nice rubbery type feel to the controller. So these are the controllers. You see it's a standard USB connection and these have got the ABXY that's as I said normally used on like um, Xbox controllers and a play button on that side clips on really well and four direction and presumably a menu button there so it's got a protective film over the screen thank you for evaluating a hardware preview pip so this is a, a preview one and it advises me to go to learnthispip.com. So I'll be going to have a look at that website as well in a short while. Got that same sticker on the back with the serial number and this pit belongs to Stuart Watkiss. You see the cameras mounted in. There's a, oh, wow, really nice uh, feel to that. A HDMI micro USB for the charging. It's actually got an SD card already inserted. The SD card is a 16 gigabyte. Headphones, speaker, and there's your Raspberry Pi connector. So, hit that so it's showing the power level. It looks like it's almost charged. And then what have we got in here? We've got a USB cable, presumably for charging. And uh, this is the PIP touch, so capacitive touch screen, uh, touch controller. 
board number 01. Looks like I've got the first one. And yeah, so there's the looks like RGB LEDs and touch the slider the mode button it's got more leds there reset but yeah, so that's maybe the cables for that so there we go so that's what's in the box and i'm really looking forward to getting through and having a go with this So I'm going to try powering it on. I'm not sure there's whether there's an image or, or what on it. So that's it powering on. As it says in the uh, the instructions, the lights move backwards and forwards to indicate it's powering on, just like Knight Rider. And they've had said, um, if you don't know about that, then ask your nearest old person. So you can see the... Piece of a just booting the standard operating system, presumably Raspberry Pi OS. The they're eventually going to provide a RetroPie version as well. Let's have a look while it's. So it looks like to connect a peripheral then you're going to have to remove these connectors. So it's, it's resulted on a PIP login. Um, so I'm going to have to disconnect this and connect a keyboard in to perhaps have a go with something. So I've now been on the website. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's a graphical interface available yet. Uh, hopefully that's to follow. It does talk about being able to connect to Wi-Fi and being able to control it. So it looks like I need to just pop in a USB keyboard. I've got a wireless keyboard here. And Yeah, so I can log in and get to the console there, easy enough. So this is a preview release and that should all be sorted. There should be a graphical interface. Just out of curiosity, have a look at what it does say. Yeah, so it's not even got um, X Windows installed, by the looks of it. So I've also been looking a bit about the GPIO, so it's not directly connected in the same way as the Raspberry Pi. So you have to use certain commands to use that. It uses a SAMD controller as an interface. So that may cause a few problems with certain programs and things. You may have to have different drivers, uh, but it does at least provide a way of interfacing with electronics. So all in all so far, I only had a very quick look at it. Uh, build quality is really nice, I would say. Uh, like the uh, light smoked look. And like the feel of it. Very nice stand. We've got the camera that does work according to uh, the instructions. So you can use that already. Uh, and uh, excited to see when the actual software is released. Uh, it looks looks very promising. I will provide an update in future as this progresses, as it's developed, and as we can do more with it. Uh, I've now tried a few things with the PIP. First, the things that work. It's possible to use the camera, and there are various test scripts provided so you can see some of the sensors. In most cases, these are all text only. 
although the camera does at least give a graphical preview when using Raspberry Still. But really the lack of graphics is the limiting factor and as such this is not much use in its current form. I also tried to boot with a normal Raspberry Pi OS image. I connected to an external screen using HDMI. The boot sequence appeared to start and I got the rainbow start screen but then it just stopped and appeared to power itself off. I think this may be a feature of the hardware which won't power up unless it gets a certain signal from the OS to indicate it's booting successfully. I can understand that might be a feature you may like on some consoles but it's a limiting factor if it doesn't allow you to run an operating system. Perhaps it's as simple as adding a device driver or adding an entry to boot.txt but without any documentation it's hard to know what's stopping it. So my thoughts so far is that the hardware looks and feels great. If there's one thing I wish it had extra it would be an extra USB port so I could program it while leaving the controllers connected. But really that's a minor thing and I'll probably use either remote control software such as VNC or develop on a different device and upload to the PIP. To be of much use this really needs a proper graphical environment. This is something the team are working on and I think it would be helpful if they could share some updates about the screen driver and perhaps give some more hardware information. For a games device and to learn programming that should be enough. When that's available I look forward to trying some of my games from my book on games programming with Pi Game Zero. From an electronics point of view we could also do with some more information on the SAMD controller used to interface with the GPIO pins. Perhaps a guide to programming that. I expect this can be achieved by installing the Arduino IDE and appropriate hardware support through the board manager. That will be a little advanced for some of the intended users but it could at least provide a way that more experienced users could create guides and it would allow the PIP to control NeoPixels and perhaps interface with other sensors. In summary, the hardware looks and feels amazing. The software really needs to be updated before this is usable though. Some more information and specs about the device would also be useful. I'm very excited to see how this will develop and I look forward to giving a more usable demonstration on a future video once the later versions of the software are available. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click the notification bell icon to get notified of new videos as I upload them. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on a future video.